The headlines are everywhere. We're hearing about AI constantly. And these days, artificial intelligence has computers completing a lot of jobs humans typically do. They have a lot of people worried about the future of our workforce and what happens now. Joining me to talk about this is Dr. Yossi Sheffi, an award-winning global supply chain expert and the director of the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. Dr. Sheffi, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having me. So I, I know that you spoke with my colleague David Wade about jobs. Uh, what worker fears in terms of AI are the most well-founded fears? The fears are understandable, but not justified in the following sense. Uh, first of all, AI is a transformative technology, especially generative AI, so there will be changes and nobody likes change, mm. especially if they don't initiate the change. <laughs> but on the other hand, the fear about losing jobs is uh, overstated mm. in the sense that uh, there will be, the truth is that nobody knows. As you say, there are people like Elon Musk and Bill Gates who think we should stop what we are doing. And on the other hand, there are people think that this, first of all, you cannot do it. And second, it's not gonna help. And third, it's the wrong thing to do. Mm. So, and, and the question is, where's the truth? You know, right. some people think it, the people in the World Economic Forum think it will usher an era of plenty and a higher standard of living, and people think other people think it will, uh, you know, ruin humanity or something sure. to that effect. There was this letter that Elon Musk, uh, I believe Steve Wozniak, it should Bill, jo Bill Gates, a lot of big tech names signed saying, we are kind of unleashing Pandora's box here. We should be careful. There should be government regulation. Perhaps we should pump the brakes on just letting these companies roll out AI uncontrolled. I think the average person's question would be, how do we do that? What is it that government regulators could even do at this point to try to create a sense of control? Is that even possible? Before I directly answer that, and I will, yeah. let me just say that one thing that people should be very, not very, but should be relaxed about is the following. When the internet came about, we all thought that this is the best thing since sliced bread. People mm. will talk to each other. People will uh, be able to connect with faraway family. Nobody thought about identity theft and, and stealing data. Nobody thought about the downside of the technology. Right now, all the developers, Amazon and uh, Google and OpenAI and Microsoft, they are all worried about the technology and they're all putting guardrails. For example, make this experiment. Go to ChatGPT and, and, and write how to make a Molotov cocktail. ChatGPT will come and say, no answer. I'm not, going, I'm not giving an answer on something like this. Mm -hmm. Because so already you see that the, the, the industry themselves is putting guardrails. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, how do you, um, how can government regulate it? The best example and the most, the most strict regulations are actually in China. Uh, the Chinese want to make sure that uh, the, the Chinese version of ChatGPT and others will not go off the rail and hurt what they call China, you know, um, society, Chinese mm. society. Mm -hmm. uh, so what they do, they control the training data. They said you cannot train the data on certain, they tell you which text you can, tra you can train the data on. So it does it doesn't go off the rail. Right. So that, but, that's but, something that, that yeah. it, it, it's hard to do, but can be done. Uh, yeah. Obviously, China's a different story where the party can pretty much dictate how, what the companies are going to do. Under our constitution here in the U.S., uh, would the government be able to say, you know, we're not going to really trust you, tech companies, to create all those guardrails? Because look what happened with the internet, as you pointed out. A lot of things did run amok uh, right up through elections, through what young Absolutely. people see on social media. Absolutely. So if you could name one thing, what, would that be it that a person could ask their member of Congress or their representative, listen, look at this rollout of AI and just make sure we're stopping any dangerous questions being answered or information being provided through a chat GPT? Is that the well, way to go at it? There are, there are the, maybe the way to go 
to go at it possibly for in, in, a, in a democratic society is to change the law to make the uh, you know the person who uh, creates the software be responsible for results that are harmful so this this will be a big change because right now we platforms for example are not uh, not quite uh, responsible for what users are, are doing with them but right. The idea that you will not get the answer within three microseconds, but you'll get the answer within two, three minutes when there's another AI system that looks at it to make sure that it's not harmful, right. for example. So you can, you can have, the, because the speed and the scope of the system is so large that humans will not have the ability that, you know, you'll have to uh, hire, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to look at the, uh, 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 the result, it, it's it's not realistic, but you right. need to develop software that can look at the result and say, okay, I can read it and I can uh, deduct that this is harmful. Right. I must say, this is not a this is not a silver bullet because no. what is harmful to one person is uh, freedom of speech to another mm. in our in our society. People but, in Silicon Valley like to say move fast and break things, but you're yeah. saying maybe there should just be a little bit more of a screening process when someone types that question into a it, chat GPT. And it can be an automated screening process mm -hmm. like they do now. You, you, you know, when you get the result about Molotov cocktail, there's no person that said that you cannot do it. It's just it's programmed in that you cannot answer result on anything that has to do with building bombs and arms and, 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 and weapons and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's, that's a very crude way of doing it because looking for specific words for specific ways. But as, as we're building more and more sophisticated AI, we can build just as sophisticated AI to guard against malicious AI. Right. So, so you're, that, you're optimistic about the workplace, ultimately, new jobs being created. What's your most terrible. optimistic view of the world 50 years from now when people don't even think about AI, it just exists as part of the world around us? Yeah, uh, 50 years, I, I'm trying to predict, you know, what I'm going to do for lunch. But or, or even just a few years I, from now. I, I, What's your most <laughs> optimistic view of what AI can do so, for us? Our most optimistic view is A, the definition of a success in AI will change from replacing people to augmenting people's jobs and work. Mm -hmm. That the best AI will not be celebrated as being to replace human tasks, but being able to make human better and more productive and happier with the task. Let me give you a quick example that you and everybody else communicate with the AI all the time when you communicate with a chatbot. You call a company, you know, customer service, and you're not talking to a person, you're talking to a computer. So they, they ask you a question and you talk and you talk back and they try to understand what you're saying. And many times they'll find an answer and they'll give you an answer. In many cases, they will not find an answer and then they will send it over to a human operator. And that's exactly, if you think, that's exactly my, my vision, is that simple tasks and boring tasks will be done by computers and tasks that require creativity and thinking, empathy and moral code and the understanding context will be done by people. Right. So jobs will be better, pay more, and simple stuff will be done by, by machine. This is a simplistic way of looking at it. There are many, many layers to doing something like this because you do need also people who can monitor the machine, people yeah. who can step in when something goes wrong. So it needs to be special training for this. So there's a lot going on. But basically, I'm looking for better and more fulfilling jobs involving in taking what the machines cannot do. Well, Dr. Sheffi, we hope you're right. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. So do I, Paula. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Yossi Sheffi, global supply chain expert, director of the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you.